When you think of electricity, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Probably a wire. We're used to thinking of metals as the best way to conduct electric current. And it's true, metals are found in pretty much all the electronics that we use, in light bulbs, phones, computers, TVs, and countless other appliances. But believe it or not, there are certain non-metals, such as conductive plastics, that can act as conductors too. Their special properties challenge our assumptions about nonmetals and allow them to harness the power of electricity. Although electricity can seem like magic, the science behind it is pretty simple. An electric current is just the flow of electrons from atom to atom. Different types of atoms are better at conducting electrons than others, which is why materials like metals are generally more conductive than others. This is because the electrons of metals are delocalized meaning that the outermost electrons in a metal atom are held loosely, allowing them to flow more freely. In contrast, the outer electrons in the atoms of a non-metal are held more closely to the nucleus, preventing movement. Think about an electrical wire. Inside, the charges flow easily through the metal filaments. On the outside, the rubber coating keeps these charges from flowing into our bodies and electrocuting us when we touch the wire. But electrically conductive plastics turn this idea on its head. These plastics are polymers, long chains made of smaller, repeating units known as monomers. By changing the structure of the atoms within the monomers, these plastics can actually become just as conductive as certain metals. Sounds pretty cool, right? You might think that some brilliant chemist made these plastics specifically for this purpose. But, like so many other important discoveries in science, this one was an accident. It happened in the lab of Hideki Shirakawa when the chemical compound polyacetylene was mixed incorrectly. Normally black and powdery, the compound instead formed a silvery film that looked distinctly metallic. Wondering if this strange substance would exhibit metallic properties, Shirakawa shared the discovery with chemist Alan McDiarmid and physicist Alan Heeger. After experimenting with many different processes, they discovered that they could actually increase the conductivity of polyacetylene to rival that of certain metals. With the addition of bromine gas, for instance, the conductivity of polyacetylene increased 10 million fold to a level that approached that of copper. Although a different conductive polymer, polyaniline, had existed for almost two centuries, the accidental discovery of polyacetylene brought the field of conductive polymers to the forefront and opened up revolutionary new possibilities for experimentation. While metals are generally the best conductors we have available today, there are many downsides to their use. Mining, shipping, and processing metals is expensive. Conductive polymers are attractive alternatives because they are lightweight, cheap, and functionally versatile. So how do these conductive polymers work? Like in metals, the flow of electric charge in conductive polymers is generated by voltage, a difference in the electrical potential of the negative and positive poles of a battery or an outlet. The negatively charged electrons are drawn towards the positive pole, and they create a current as they pass from atom to atom, but like we mentioned, the electrons of polymers usually aren't delocalized and cannot easily move around to conduct current. But let's take another look at polyacetylene. If you look closely, you'll notice that there's an alternating pattern of single and double bonds holding the atoms of the polymer together. This is known as a conjugated backbone. Along this backbone, the sigma bonds hold each atom together by concentrating electrons directly between them. The pi bonds, which constitute the second bond in each double bond, strengthen the connection between their atoms by attracting electrons above and below the plane of the molecule. This forms delocalized orbitals where the mobility of electrons can be enhanced through a process called doping. This process essentially changes the number of electrons in the polymer by either removing or adding electrons to the atom. Removing electrons creates empty spaces in the outermost orbital of the atom, allowing the remaining electrons to move around more freely. Adding electrons forces an atom to create another orbital, and so long as this orbital isn't full, the electrons have more space to move around and hop from atom to atom. You can think of it like a pool table full of billiard balls. The balls would be able to move around if they weren't getting in each other's way. But if you take out a few balls, the rest of them can move around. Or, alternately, if you add more balls, you need to add a new pool table. In this new pool table, they have lots of room to move around. The more easily they can move around, the more easily they can transport charges and conduct electrical currents. Although initially no one believed that polymers could conduct electricity, 
The scientific community has since caught up to Shirakawa's research. In 2000, Shirakawa, McDiarmid, and Heger were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, and the research around conductive polymers has grown exponentially ever since. While the full potential of conductive polymers has yet to be discovered, there are countless possibilities for developments in technology and medical science, such as high-capacity batteries, artificial muscles, and biosensors. So while we probably won't see plastics entirely replacing metals in our lifetime, the field of conductive polymers has huge potential, especially for something that began as a mistake. <laughs>